Hey guys, it's Dan and Tom here from Table Tennis Daily. Now, a few years ago, we released a video of the top 10 tips to become a better table tennis player quickly, which helped a lot of players. Yeah, that's right. Now we're back with part two and 10 more tips to help you level up and improve your game. Let's, Let's go. go. Okay, tip number one is get the ball on the table. Now, this may sound a bit crazy and a bit obvious, but so often players are going for high risk shots, trying to play the winner and not being consistent enough and giving away the points. It's so important that you make your opponent earn each point, get the ball on the table and be consistent with your shots. Okay, so now a way to improve this consistency is focusing on placement against your opponent and not just all out speed. Now, a lot of players, when they play too hard and fast, they end up hitting the ball thick and losing the contact. Now you want to just slow your game right down and just really feel the ball. So concentrating on spinning the ball rather than hitting the ball too thick. Because this is how you can make mistakes, hitting too thick through the ball. So going for the brush strokes gives you that spin and safety and you can focus on the placement. Yeah, that's spot on, Dan. A lot of players, when they get under pressure and tense in games, tend to force the shots, go for too much speed and power and forget about the control, spin and placement of the shots. Okay, so tip number two, which leads from tip number one, is quick transitions and your recovery. Now, it's absolutely key you recover well in table tennis. The ball comes through so quickly, you don't have time to recover. So having quick transitions really helps your game. Now, a good way to avoid having a poor transition between shots is not dropping the bat. When you play a stroke, you want to recover with the bat high. That helps you get to the next ball very quickly. Also helps with your recovery too. So one thing we see quite a lot that stops players having a quick transition is big long swings. And of course this slows down your recovery time, makes you inefficient, you use a lot of wasted energy and often you end up dropping back from the table. So we see players with these long swings and they can't actually then keep up with the ball. You end up dropping off usually and then it's very high risk when you force back from the table. It's hard to then get back. So what we want is a nice short transition between backhand and forehand, compact shots with a short follow through keeping that bat nice and high between the backhand and forehand. So here, I'm using my body better, keeping that bat high as I switch, nice short strokes, and I can keep that timing point at the table and really bump up that consistency. So of course, in a table tennis match, the ball can go anywhere on the table. So having good quick transitions really helps. Now, another way to aid your quick transitions is your recovery position after each shot. Now, a lot of players play a stroke and they stay in the same position Ball goes to the backhand, you're gonna get caught out. You need to be able to recover back to the neutral position to be able to play the next shot so you can play a good quality ball and not be caught out. So if Tom puts me anywhere on the table and I'm playing my shots, I wanna to recover to the center and I can then keep an eye on his back angle and then play the stroke. A bit caught out there. So I'm hovering into the center after each stroke so I can then cover the backhand or the forehand and not be stuck on one side. Okay, tip number three, guys, is actually practice. Now, a lot of players we know will rock up to the training hall. They might have a five or 10 minute knock up and go straight into match play. Doing this, you are not gonna improve. You need to do some structured drills, focus on your strengths and weaknesses, and actually practice to help you get those improvements. Yeah, it's so true, Tom. Now, also many players who want to improve, they might play a match once a week, like a local league, maybe one practice session, and as you say, a lot of it is involving matches. But getting the practicing is key. And I saw an interview once with Richard Prowse, and he said, if you just play once or twice a week, you kind of maintain your level. But if you practice three times a week with good structure and good drills, then actually you make some serious gains. So I think that's something we need to take from there is actually get to the table and put some time in doing some drills and doing some practice. Tip number four is groove your strokes. Now this is vital. You wanna be able to put a lot of quality on the ball with a lot of consistency. Now, a lot of players do have good shots, but they can't repeat it. So to get really good and consistent with a shot is keep things very simple and work on each shot in an isolated position to start out with. So for example, Tom is gonna play in the same spot the whole time and I'm working on weight transfer, good feeling and touch on the ball, and turning my body with my head forward. Now, by hitting a lot of shots like this with a lot of consistency, it's gonna help improve the shot quality and improve your game. And now let's progress it. So once you're happy with your stroke and it's getting consistent, you can start moving into adding footwork. So now I'm gonna get Tom to block one wide and one to my middle. And now I've got to play the stroke and move my feet. Try and hit the ball at the top of the bounce, head forward. And again, brushing the ball like so. So this time I'm gonna get Tom to block me anywhere in my forehand half. 
and I've got a plated stroke and I've got to keep an eye on his back angle, be on the balls of my feet and improve the stroke quality when I'm not too sure where the ball's going. Like so. Now, it's really important that if you are struggling in the irregular setting, you go back to the regular setting, get really comfortable with it, make sure you're really consistent and solid with that, then move on again to the irregular and even add in serve return drills and make it even more match realistic. This is what's gonna enable you to be really solid under pressure, improve your decision-making and not get flustered and caught out when it comes to a match situation. Tip five is get a practice partner. Now, if you can, it's great to have someone that will come down with you to the training hall and put in that hours of effort, and you can help each other, push each other along and improve your game. Now, of course, it's not always possible, but to find someone of a similar standard is really good because you can make things competitive and help each other improve and push each other along. So sometimes you might have to use a robot or do serving practice, but if you can, find that training buddy that you enjoy practicing with, and it's gonna help you improve much, much quicker. Okay, so tip number six is variety of serves. Now, mixing up your serves in matches really helps. It stops your opponent getting used to what serve you're doing, so then you become more unpredictable. A lot of players, when under pressure, they start doing the same serve over and over again, and they forget actually how important it is to mix up your serve. Yeah, it's so vital to not be predictable in the game. Mix up the placement and spin of your serves. Keep the opponents guessing. And it's also really important to find serves that set up your strengths. If you don't mix up the serves, you're never gonna find those opportunities. Absolutely, and also mix up your serves. You might find a weakness from opponent as well. Even if you did a long, fast serve down the line, you might find, oh, they're a bit weak on the forehand there, I can catch them out. So mixing up your serves can really find the vulnerabilities in your opponent and help your match play. So guys, developing a deceptive serve is really key to helping you improve. Now, if you do want to learn a more deceptive serve, we've recently released a masterclass with the greatest player of all time, Jan Ove Waldner. Now, one of the videos in the masterclass, he looks in depth at how to create a more deceptive and disguised serve, where you can win more points and put your opponents under pressure right from the start of the rally. So to access the Waldner masterclass, simply join the academy today by clicking the links below. Tip number seven is get comfortable on the defensive. Many players are very confident when they're attacking first, playing their top spin game and getting on top. However, when you get the first attack against them, get them on the back foot, defending and blocking, they tend to struggle a lot more and their level goes down a lot. So it's really important to be equally good at getting the first top spin, but also controlling and being on the defensive when your opponent top spins against you. Now, a great drill to practice this is simple but effective is getting your opponent to topspin anywhere on the table and I'm going to block back to Dan's forehand. So I have to be good at adapting, be comfortable with blocking even when the ball is in irregular different positions. So let's have a look. So it's really important that I'm keeping nice and relaxed. My weight is low and forward. I'm keeping my bat high between my strokes, not allowing it to drop a nice cushion on the contact, not trying to force it. Being able to do this is really important in match play because often if you're not comfortable on the defensive, you will end up giving a weak ball and dropping back from the table and giving your opponent the advantage. If you're able to hold at the table with a couple of good blocks, often you'll find you can get it into a good position and then look for the counter attack. Okay, so tip number eight is watching other players and really try and analyze table tennis. Watch the tactics, see what they're doing to win points and just watching how they are. Are they nice and low when they're playing? Are they mixing up the serves? And just watching table tennis in a different way rather than just watching all the big points and the big shots and the highlights on YouTube. Try and actually watch a whole match and just see what's going on. And that can really help improve your game because you can try and bring some of those elements into your practice and into your matches. Tip number nine is expose yourself to different styles of play. Now, as we said earlier, it's nice to have a training partner that you can play with regularly, but it's also very important to play with different styles of players, maybe defenders, players who block, players who all out attack. And that's the great thing about table tennis. There's so much variety, but it also makes it challenging. So playing against all these different styles really does help. And if you can practice against them even better, especially players with anti-spin or pimples or defenders, because it's quite hard to learn against those players in a match situation. So Tom here, you've got some nice trusty long pimples on the backhand. So it's good for me here to practice against them. And it's good practice for me to work on feeling the ball against these different spins. Nice. Okay, so our final tip, tip number 10, is document yourself. Really important to have a journal, write down your results, write down how you're getting on, things you've learned. It really helps to track your progress and remember things. It's very hard to just play and not, not document stuff. Also, you'll notice 
as a few years go by, you look back at your notes, you look back at your video footage from a couple of years ago, you get a lot of confidence from it because you can see how much improvement you've made and it really does help. And you know, I wish I could see some of my videos 20 years ago, 15 years ago. I'd love to have that sort of footage. And now with the mobile phones, it's so easy to record yourself practicing. So this really does help document your play, record yourself surf practice, record yourself in matches, analyze yourself. Doing that really does help improve your game, a key one. So there we go, guys. There was part two of our top 10 tips to become a better table tennis player quickly. That's right, so make sure you give these tips a good try in the training hall. And also let us know in the comments below any other tips that you found help you improve. Now be sure to like, subscribe for more tutorials here on Table Tennis Daily. Thanks, Thanks for watching. watching.